This clinic is about dynamics. It's about playing live, it's about playing in the studio, and it's about playing different music styles. So a lot of topics to cover. It's time that I introduce my guest. He's a very experienced musician and producer, Juan van Emmeloed. Hey, welcome everybody. And Juan, thank you for this nice introduction, this nice opening of this, uh, this new clinic. You were here last time uh, in November. Then we yep. talked about creating grooves. Yes. This time we're going to take it to a next level. We're going to talk about dynamic ranges. Yes. But we are going to introduce new music styles. Mm -hmm. So this time it's not about many notes or last uh, uh, fast chops. No. It's about feel of the groove. Yep. How can you get more feel in it? Feel and sound, of course. And sound, of course. So. This is what we are going to do this time. And this clinic is streamed live on music-clinics.com, of course. And it's also streamed live on Facebook. And you can ask us questions. And if you are on the Music Clinics website, you can send in your question. There's a small kind of a button, a link you can click on, ask a question. If you s ask a question through that link, um, our people behind the scenes will see it. And we hope to answer all your questions tonight. If you are on Facebook, just fill in a comment. We will see it also. And your questions will come into the clinic also, hopefully. And there's a first one coming in. It's from uh, Francesco Raimundi. I think he's from Italy. Yes, and he sounds asks, like it. <laughs> and he asks, if you have any tips when you have a mic drum kit, is it different when you play on a mic drum kit with, oh. with regards to dynamics in this case? Yeah, okay. Um, well, regarding to uh, miking your drum set, I mean, uh, I assume that uh, uh, Raymond is his name? No, his name is uh, Francesco. Francesco, okay. Francesco, um, and everybody else, of course, also, um, if you uh, mic out your drum set, for instance, uh, uh, like this drum set, every uh, single drum has a separate microphone. Uh, then we have the setup here with the mixing desk. This uh, we have all here. So that means that every instrument is uh, is carefully mic'd and uh, leveled also. Uh, that also means that if if you uh, listen on a good pair of uh, headphones, 
you can make it possible for yourself to create a very uh, nice sounding uh, drum kit. Of course, first of all, it starts with tuning the drum kit. Yeah, sure. Good acoustic in the room. Great. And then, of course, you have to play. Now, this question about uh, uh, is there a difference uh, between a drum kit mic'd setup or acoustic? Yes, there is a difference. There is a difference. Uh, my experience with uh, uh, a mic'd drum set is that you hear more details. Yeah. So if you put uh, a, a good pair of headphones and uh, you make a nice uh, sounding balance, a very simple but good uh, honest sounding uh, balance on your headphones, uh, you're uh, capable of hearing everything. So it's also, also when you just practice at home, it's even better to have your mic to don't get mic I, I think because uh, you can hear everything. Uh, true, you can true. record everything. But but the the, the thing is, I think we have to uh, 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 take apart the two two yeah. uh, subjects. I think the question first is: uh, Is there a different approach? You always start with an acoustic drum set without micing it. So first, you have to learn uh, how to find your dynamical approach there. Yeah. Um, then, when you mic it up, you can be more accurate with little details. So yes, there is a difference, but I think you should start with playing acoustic drum set just in a great acoustic room. Yeah. You can, uh, if, you if you don't have one, you can create one, but that's a different subject. And uh, but if you have a nice uh, sounding room and you mic mic your drum set and you use headphones, you make a nice uh, mix. Then you go can go a next step. Yeah. And yes, there is a, there is a difference. There's a difference. So it's good good to do it in that way if if it's controlled. Yes. If it's controlled, yeah. so you can yeah. really manage the sound. Yeah. Um, during this clinic, we also like to know more about you, so we are going to ask you some polls. And by the way, if you are on the musicclinics.com website, you can answer them below the video player. There will be some buttons you can click on. If you are on Facebook, just uh, send in a, a comment and choose A, B or C. Uh, then we'll see what your, what your answer is. Uh, and to open with, I think a very simple question, but What's how, what's the, how many piece drum kit is who I'm playing on now? Ah. Is that a six piece? A or B? Is it the eight-piece drum kit, or is it C, a fourteen-piece drum kit? Just make your make your choice. Click on A, B, or C, or send in a comment through uh, Facebook, uh, and we'll see the answer later on, <laughs> I guess. So now about dynamics. Ah, where can we kick off? I think uh, dynamics. Yeah, uh, you have to learn to uh, uh, to find. Your dynamics. I mean, if you start playing drums, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Because uh, when you start playing drums, you have to find a way to, um, uh, to use your physical movements. And it, it will always be a little bit loud in the beginning. Uncontrolled, so yeah. uh, we say in, the, in uh, drumming terms. Um, so I have a little tip for you. If you uh, are uh, familiar with playing drums, and even the experienced drummers can, can work with this. I, I train this too. Uh, you have a soft layer, I call this soft, then it's uh, medium, and then uh, there's very loud. Yeah. Uh, if you want to uh, be able to uh, make uh, music and make your drums sound uh, rich and music in a musical way, uh, it's good to, to train yourself to, uh, to use these uh, uh, dynamic ranges, as we call them. So first of all, uh, let's, let's start with the, 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 the lowest part. Yeah. And I advise everybody to uh, switch off your strainers of the snare so <laughs> you don't hear this sound. Because if you hear the snare drum sound, what the brain does, uh, oh, I want to hear the groove. So try to stay away from that. So I switch off the strainers, so you have this sound. It's like, it's like, oink, like, oink. like a normal drum. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, wh what is a good thing to do? Um, hit your drums, like in a soft way, and try to uh, find a, a nice tone and the best tone that you can create. I give you a little example. I play around because it's nice to, to play around. And I make a, a, a kind of a pattern. See what comes out. Improvised. I'll do this. Mm. Nice beat. And Just a little example to, to experience uh, the touch, yeah. the way you play it, and uh, I feel, I, I can only translate from what I'm playing, I can feel that uh, I'm, I'm saying to my body, hey, relax, 
uh, play a nice sounding uh, groove, a pattern, keep repeating it. I mean, if you keep repeating it, is uh, you also work with the, the short-term uh, memory, memory yeah. part of your brains, which is also good training for playing drums. Because if you go random all constantly, um, the effect will be that in the end you, you have no idea what you've been doing, uh, and it doesn't sound like uh, a repetition. So for drummers, it doesn't sound like music. And then you get in a, in a certain mood where you go, well, you know, I played some drums, but I had no clue what I was what doing. What it was, yeah. Do you so recognize if you, that? If you, if you want to do it the second time, you, you can't remember what it was. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But, you know, in this case, what uh -huh. I see with your drum kit is that you've got a lot of different drums. Yes. High, high tuned drums, effect yeah. drums. Does it also influence how your the dynamics itself? Or? It does, it does. Um, you know, normally when you sit behind a drum kit like this, uh, I have a setup also uh, with a rock band. Then I use only a snare drum, yeah. a small tom, and two floor toms. That's, that's basically what you see with 80% of the drummers exactly. these days. And what happens is 80% of the drummers and 80% of the music you play is, is you have to keep time. It has to be steady. It has to be rocking. It has to be sound, uh, full sounding and rich. Okay, this is a good... Uh, a good thing. Um, I like that. I like energy. I mm. love energy. Uh, but when you um, continue practicing and you uh, put your nose into different directions and you find different music styles, you will find out that uh, the volume is something that, that can be uh, against you, can work yeah. against you in, in a certain way. So uh, the fine part would be if, if you could control your energy instead of making volume, uh, having a certain attitude in playing. And the attitude of playing uh, makes your drum sound big, but doesn't make your drum sound loud. Yeah. I can give you a little example of that. Yeah. Shall we do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? We're here. So I, I We're switch here, on the, We're here to see some drumming, so not only talking. What a question. <laughs> what a question. <laughs> I switch on the drum set. So uh, the, drum, the, snare, the strainer. So we have a snare drum. So there goes the brain. Oh, I want to rock this groove. OK, <laughs> relax. We're going to rock but not with the volume, okay? Uh, let me play one version, uh, what we normally would do, uh, pick up a big volume, and then we, we put our physical energy yeah. into this playing. There we go. Okay, do you hear? <laughs> I hear it. So it's great. You feel the energy inside you go big, and it's nice. But if you really listen in this room, um, I think on a festival stage, this would be great. Um, now I play the same thing with the less louder volume, yeah. with the same energy and the same impact. Listen to what happens to the sound. Did you hear any difference? Yeah, sure. What was the difference you heard? It sounds more, uh, it's, it's more groovy. It's more like music instead of just hitting some drums. Yeah, yeah. Basically. And, and that makes a difference. And you know what, uh, what I experienced? Uh, I had to load up my energy. I just, before I started to play uh, the second part of the drums, yeah. I imagined myself playing in a big stadium, but then uh, I switched my brains to, okay, but less loud. And then you have the attitude of playing big with a big uh, yeah. attitude, but uh, keep your volume down. Uh, still, if we go back to the three layers of uh, dynamic ranges, I was not soft, I was not uh, playing middle, but I was playing my loud. sort yeah. of loud part. And the first part I played was over the top loud. So as you can see that uh, uh, I think you have to adapt to the situation where you are at. I think this is a yeah. good tip. Yeah, okay. So that's I think that's an important lesson from from the beginning, from, from the first part of this clinic. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Tim asked us: Is there a difference between when you play on a live stage or in a studio? I think there is. Absolutely. But what you just tried to explain is that when you are in a studio, you still have to have this attitude. Yes. Because that's when it really sounds yeah. great. Let me, let me explain to you that uh, if you play uh, the very loud, it's it's great because it feels great. The only thing that happens is first of all your ears. Yeah. You go afterwards. And the ears of your uh, band members. Absolutely, in a small room. So in a recording session even, you can find out uh, if you play very loud that sometimes the drums uh, will sound less 
full and rich. They will sound uh, very uh, punchy, maybe a little bit too much attack, and there will be no bottom sound. Uh, because the balance yeah. you put in the drum is totally out of balance. That's the volume, so bats. You kill the drums, basically. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I know this because I did this many times before. So I try to uh, become more a musical drummer, so play less loud and, and uh, put the same energy into it, because I know what the rock energy is. Yeah. Uh, play softer but volume, richer sound. Great, and uh, and the uh, by the way, we got the uh, the the uh, the outcome of the poll. Yes. What's the right answer? How many piece? Oh, um, that's an interesting question. Now le yeah. let's count. You know, with with the drum set, if people ask you uh, or professionals, you know, the, the ask choice was six, eight, or fourteen. Exactly, piece. exactly. So uh, it's very simple. What do you think, by the way, the most people answered? Ah. I have no idea. You know, okay, just, just, just okay, tell let us. me tell my just story. Tell yeah. Because uh, I know that some people count the screws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they count the cymbals yeah. and they, they count the microphones. So uh, what you need to do is actually only focus on the, the, the shell, the drums. So if you see the drums here, um, watch with me. This is one. The snare is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah. So it's an eight piece drum set. You know, so the right answer was B, but 50% of the people said 14 P, so they counted all the symbols. Exactly. So, and but there's a logical explanation for this, eh? why you only count the drums. Yeah, the reason why you do this is, is actually a technical reason. Um, if, if you, okay, if you have to play on a festival, uh, technicians, sound technicians just want to know what drum to mic up. If you watch closely in this setup, that uh, almost all the drums have a separate microphone. And then we have the overhead microphones for the, the rest yeah. of the symbols and everything else. So, uh, in fact, uh, the answer is, is, is the, you know, very simple. It's it, there's a technical reason for yeah. it. That's it's just the drums. So, so people know what you up. need. Exactly. We got a question in uh, from someone who's watching. I don't have his name or oh. her name, but uh, anonymous. The, the question it's anonymous. <laughs> the question is, what volume or level should I practice my technique? Ah, that's a good question. I think you should uh, practice all levels basically but um, what I know is uh, if, you, if you play soft if you play soft and you start soft and then you grow uh, it's difficult but when you uh, 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 play loud very often and you have to play soft it, that can also hurt mm -hmm. so I think um, what happens is uh, if you have it like a rock roof like this one boom let me give you a little example again uh, I play this very soft now same attitude but very soft <coughs> Now let me explain to you what happens here. Because I have to do this example so I can explain it to you. It's not a theory. What happens is, uh, because I play soft, I cannot throw my arm into that direction because it will hit the yeah. cymbal very hard. So I have to control it. So there's a difference between uh, my timing going from the high to that crash, for instance, if I go loud or soft. If I go soft, it's harder work. Yeah. If you go loud, it's bam, you throw your arm and bats, you hit that cymbal. And it, it's all very, I mean, for me, it's very simple. So for me to, to play soft, it's hard work, so I practice soft. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. Good, good answer to the question. I hope so. Uh, we have to conclude this part of the uh, of the clinic. Okay. Uh, we answered the question, we had the poll. We have some uh, things to learn mm -hmm. uh, from this part, is that you have to practice in three layers of volume. Yeah. First of all, secondly, work closely on timing and tempo. Yeah, I think that's what we can conclude on. Well, the, 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 uh, little example. The the danger is, uh, and it's very common, if we try to uh, put up your volume, we speed up tempo. It's a brain thing. Yeah. If you play uh, softer, you slow down. Ask any good singer. I mean, I know uh, certain good singers, and they will uh, laugh now if they hear it. It's true. If the band, uh, you know, plays rock and bum bum bum, and there comes a little first back or uh, interlude, and and the singer does okay. So put the volume down, uh, immediately the drummer will play s uh, slower. Oh, yeah. So as a drummer, you have to keep time. It's like many volume. drummers, if they come out of a, a break, they also get faster. Yes. Because they think, I'm not going yes. to make it, so speed up. Or enthusiasm. 
Yeah, or enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And the last, the, the last thing we learned from this part, I think, is that you have to play with attitude. Yes. It's also nicer to, to look at when you play with attitude instead of when you're just drumming and yeah. just only doing things for yourself. But yeah. if you play with an attitude, yeah. people can also yeah. love to watch it. Yeah. Um, then we have a second part of this clinic. Uh, it's something that we are going to introduce for all the new clinicians in the future. Like we have Michael Scheck in September. Okay. We have Mario Gosens in October. Fantastic. Great. Uh, and like I'm going to ask you now, we're going to ask them later also, is can you show us a video or music or whatever that inspired you in your younger years? Yes. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> yes, um, well, I, I uh, picked out uh, something um, that was very special to me. Actually, uh, I think I was like 14 when I heard it, or maybe I was younger. I cannot remember that much uh, of it. But what I do remember is I was listening to pop music a lot. And the drummer, uh, drummer's role in pop music in those days, I'm talking about the uh, late 70s, uh, was they, they had to keep time and keep the song steady. And that was great. I enjoyed it. I mean, the reason why I wanted to play drums, if I'm honest, I wanted to play in a band. And in fact, I still want that. Yeah. So that's the reason why I play drums. It's not to become uh, the best drum of the world. Uh, it once came to my brains and then, eh, get out of there. I just want to be with a group of people and enjoy uh, playing music. And uh, so I was listening to all those bands, and then I heard a drum solo of this drummer, and he played with Santana, okay. live, bam, just okay. watch this. I think we should watch it now. Oh, yeah. There he comes. Great man, this was Graham Lear in 1976. Yes. yes. This guy is 66 years, 66 years old now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And he's still playing a yes. lot. I haven't seen him playing uh, lately, yeah. but uh, yeah, this, this is just one of the things that uh, really, uh, how can I say that, uh, inspired me a lot. I mean, did you see the energy? I mean, I didn't see the video, huh? This yeah. was just on the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I could feel the energy. And if I watch this video, I, 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 I know that my brains showed me how he was playing it. I yeah, could imagine great. his energy. I have, to, I have the same feeling with the, 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 the drum solo of Ian Pace in ah. at Made in Japan from Deep Purple. Okay. I loved it. Cool. I still love it. Still uh, cool, love it. Cool. But I mean, if you look at drum solos these days, they're totally different. There's more technique involved. Yes. There's more yes. electro electronic drums involved, yeah. more, more yeah. triggers involved. Mm -hmm. um, and people get faster for some reason. But <laughs> fast is not, of course, important. It's about the feel you get, yes, from, you get from, the, from the drum solo. Um, so we're going to the next part. But first of all, um, I like to ask everyone, just send in your questions. If you have questions for Juan, you send it in via the website, musicclinics.com. Click on Ask a Question. You can send it in. Or in Facebook, just post a comment. And we will see it, and we will answer your question here. And there was a question, I guess, is from a fan of yours. It's Peter. Peter. And he says, he notices that you have new symbols. <laughs> and he asks us, uh, does that influence your way of playing? Ah. Well, yes. In fact, uh, uh, playing on these symbols uh, totally uh, 
changed my brain set or my mindset in, in, in uh, playing drums. Uh, and I can tell this because uh, it's been a long time that I played in my home studio uh, till late at night for hours. And where, where I thought, you know what, I, heat, I need to go to bed early because tomorrow is an early day. And I just kept playing. And uh, I started playing s softer. Right. I started playing different sounds and, and all these these funny things you, you can put on the cymbals and I like so the stack you have over there. This one. Yeah. yeah. So th these different sounds uh, actually uh, uh, slowly are making me play in a different way. Yeah. And uh, I'm really happy for that because that means for me that uh, they're as if you open a new door with new great. playground, with new games and, and wow, what's this? I still great. have to explore. It's great. Great yeah. to hear. Um, we're going to the next part. Okay. Because we all want to discover, of course, what a killer groove is. Uh -huh. that's, that's the next part. Yeah. How can you make a killer groove? How can you see that it's a killer groove? But we're going to start with a poll first. And I'd like you to watch and listen closely to what Juan's playing right now. Cool. What you're going to play. Yep. And uh, there will be a question afterwards. Yeah. So I played some congas. And I uh, record this on this, this uh, little machine. Yeah. It's a loop machine. It's actually for singers. And, uh, and you can play against it. It's fun. So you should do this also. Let's see what this is. Question: What who I was just playing was that a what what was the meter of this group? Exactly. Was it a a four four, b a three four, or c seven eight? Just pick your answer uh, when you are on musicclinics.com. If you are on Facebook, just put in your answer in the comment, and we will see it afterwards. Floor is yours again. How can we determine and create a killer groove? Ah, okay. So I think a killer groove in the first place is something that you yourself really like to play. It starts with that, you know? It, it's not like uh, there is a book and here are the killer grooves. So, uh, like last time, I'm uh, always trying to inspire people to use their creative brain as much as possible. Okay, uh, when you start learning drums, there are some rules, you have to obey them, you have to train them, you have to practice. But then, uh, you should be brave enough to experiment and, and to try to find uh, other ways to play it. Now, once you are on that path, you will listen uh, better to the sound you are creating because um, you're not copying anything. You're finding out uh, new ways of playing. So what I like about a killer groove is a killer groove is something that you play uh, in a uh, repetitive way yeah. and uh, it's consistent and it sounds nice. And for me personally, I like uh, laid back timing. You know, some people say, oh, you always play slow. Yeah, man, I, I love it. You know, why not? So killer groove, for example, uh, a nice snare sound. In 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 uh, today, I brought my mellow snare, as I call it. Yeah. It's uh, tuned very low. <laughs> Has no snares there, yeah. but there they are. And they make you play a little bit more laid back. So here's a good example of a killer groove. Not so many notes. Open sounds, and uh, repetitive. Very important. There you go.
it's just a little example. And I'm trying to analyze what happens inside. What happens inside is I try to create a pattern instant uh, and keep space. Did yeah. you hear the space? What so not many notes. Not many notes. But many feel, uh, a great feel. Exactly. Yeah. You know what happens is uh, in any rhythm, and we will talk about that later also, uh, what is important is you have to understand that there is a, a, a playground for low notes and high notes. In this case, it's the bass from the snare. The interaction between yeah. the two instruments is very important. If you fill everything with notes constantly, uh, it's like a conversation that you cannot really understand. This is how I try to translate it. So I like to make a, a, a little pattern on a hide or a, mm -hmm. you know, a tambourine or, or a shaker. So you have a, a certain groove to go with, you know. That's a train that's rolling. Exactly. Yeah. You, you need that train. Then the other thing is I totally rely on the inside clock, the internal clock that you have to create as a drummer. I mean, this is an advice I give to any drummer. Uh, it's good to play with a click track, but you know, try to trust on your tempo feel. We discussed that in the clinic in November. Yeah, we did yeah. that. We did that, and I, I tried to say this because it's in a topic that always comes back. Yeah. Uh, if you are focusing too much on, oh, I want to play this riff, I want to be fast, then you forget uh, that you have to watch your internal clock. That's more important, and you can do your practicing and stuff like that. But you don't, you, you know, don't need to show off then. Yeah. Talking about internal clock. Yeah. We got the answer of the poll. Okay. The right answer is 3-4. Absolutely. 44% cool. had a correct answer. 44% said 7-8. That, that's possible 12% too. Yeah, <laughs> said 4-4. Four, four. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. And uh, we directly got a, a question from uh, one of the viewers. Um, he said, well, he's very into detail. Did you change drumsticks for dynamic, pur uh, dynamic purposes? Did I change what? Yeah, drumsticks. I don't think you changed drumsticks. Not but tonight. But would it be useful to use other drumsticks? Of course, of course. Um, now, maybe not in your case, but if oh. I, I want to be more dynamic in my playing, would it be wise then to investigate what drumsticks am I using? Do they need to be... Heavier or let me give you a straight answer for that. I, I just believe that uh, if you have one pair of drumsticks, uh, they have you the pair that you really love, you can work with. These are your tools. I think you should be able to play anything uh, you want with it, but it, it's it's a hard study already to yeah. play with one pair of drumsticks uh, in different. But uh, it makes a difference. It does make a difference. But it's uh, how you can translate your feeling through the drumstick. I mean, if you have very uh, heavy, thick drumsticks. I think the the can you play jazz with heavy thick drumsticks? Well, I don't you know, think so. You know, if, 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 you, if I would play in a, in a jazz combo, I would change the tuning of the drum set yeah. to start with. Yeah. I wouldn't change the drumsticks. No. I would ch change the tuning. I would change the cymbals. Yeah. You know, go for a softer cymbal. So, uh, yeah, I think I, I wouldn't advise to, to change the drumsticks. Get used to your, your pair and, yeah. and, and or find the right pair for you yeah. and do anything with that as much as you can. Okay, great. Hope that's a good answer. Okay, Killer Groove. Continue. Yeah. Because you, you do a lot of, I mean, you're playing now for how long? 40 years? Yes. You still have to discover new grooves. Yes. So I, th I guess you spend a lot of time in finding these killer grooves. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, what I like to do is to, to find something that's a little bit different. It's not easy all the time because uh, uh, sometimes you play with artists and they, they really want to hear certain grooves. Uh, recently, I played with this young artist, uh, fantastic guy, singer, songwriter. He's from Italy. Uh, he plays drums too. He always says, no, I don't play this. He plays great drums. Um, the good thing about it is he's a, a, a guy, he's uh, 27, he's from this age. Yeah. If you ask me, can you play a rock roof? I would play a rock roof that is from the 80s or the 90s, which is normal. That's rock music for us. He would come up with drum grooves I would even not think about. Yeah. So what I'm doing then is I'm trying to learn them. And then I discovered that there are so many other uh, ways to play rock music. Uh, that that's it's super interesting to dive into that uh, area. Now, still, if you learn something new, you have to find a way to make it yours. You yeah. know, if you have to make it a killer groove, um, and that's that's quite interesting to get there because that uh, that means that you you have to quickly adapt. Hmm. Then you have to make it your own. It's not uh, like uh, uh, playing a cover of a band. Oh, I have to play exactly like mm -hmm. the drummer. I think you should be brave enough to get deeper into it and uh, yeah. make it make it your groove. And this is all about uh, creating your own Making sound. Making your own signature. 
in Absolutely. this case, even yeah. when you are playing in a cover band. Yes, if you can, yeah, pick up the challenge and do it. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had a discussion once, very shortly. Uh, the guy made a difference between okay, I play that song or I'm, I play the cover of that song. And I was like, what is the difference for you? Yeah. And he said, well, if you play the cover, you have to do exactly as the drummer did. I said, what's nice about that? Yeah, but it's more difficult you know, well, yeah. that you try to choose other elements. And, and then we tried it uh, during class, and it was pretty difficult. I think it's more interesting to look at someone who made his own signature on a, on a song we all know, instead of playing exactly the same. Yeah. We can or the, the, the original drummer would be so very great that it's even yeah. fantastic if you can copy him. But yeah, yeah. They're but just a few songs. I, you know, I, I try to inspire people to use uh, their creative mind and become themselves more, you know, as much as you can. Yeah. And it's not always easy, I must say, because sometimes you hear music and you, you need to practice it. But even I, I, I dive into it, I study the way it sounds, and then I go that step further. Yeah, but I know from you that you also play bass. Fantastic. Yes, thank you. And I guess you used bass also to, to create these grooves. Yes, True. Uh, what happens is, um, okay, sometimes I, I pick up a bass and, um, oh, in this machine, I have some loops there. Uh, let me find it. And I play some bass to it, and then uh, it makes me play uh, drums in a different way. Yeah. Can I show you some? Yeah, sure. Let, let me see, see what I can find. Uh, people. Oh, there's one. You can hear this? You hear that bass? So, I was into uh, slapping and uh, picking, uh, the, uh, plucking uh, the, the string. So it's pretty funky, it's pretty fast, it's a loud cowbell, so I can keep time. And the normal thing you would do, I will show you uh, a regular groove, then I will show you a step further. Yeah. And I find this killer groove that I like so much. Okay. And I have to lock in there. Okay, there we go. Just a simple, yeah, light example, little yeah. e uh, example. Um, some people ask me, why do you play other instruments? It's really funny. I say, well, I just love it. Yeah, someone is uh, even asking, do I, is it wise for me to spend time on learning other instruments? Ah, because uh, you lose the time for drums, of course. I absolutely. guess that's what is meant here. Yes. But do I, well, do I have more speed in my, in my drum learning because I also need because I also know how to play another instrument. Okay. Does it help me? It's, it's very simple. You, you're asking two questions, yeah. uh, or the person asks two questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, you won't speed up learning drums. Of course not, because you lose time. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, uh, your playing becomes more musical, more rich, if you try to play another instrument also. Yeah. And I'm not saying that uh, you have to become the, on the same level as your drumming. I mean, I play drums, thank you so much. I play bass, yes, but I'm not the bass player. You cannot phone me at night, hey, can you come for this gig? Uh, can you come on tour? Because I will have to study that. Yeah. And with the drums, is you can make, wake me up. I could even stop sleeping and just play a loogity whoop. Yeah. Because all the information is already inside me. So, But what I, what I say is, is uh, very simple. If you pick up a different instrument, you will listen to your own drums in a different way. Yeah. And uh, if you record it, like here, in the beginning, I would play every note. I would fill it up. And then you realize when you record it back and you listen back to it, you go it's like, too much. why am I filling everything? Yeah. There's no space for the other instrument. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. S another viewer is, yeah. uh, uh, thank you for all these questions, because we like yes. questions coming in. Cool. Uh, and by the way, we have time all night if we want to and if you want to, of course. Uh, he or she, I don't know in this case also, is asking, uh, what about grooving with brushes? Ah. You cannot groove with brushes. No, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> Let me find some brushes here. Yeah. Um, I don't understand really why 
people would think that with brushes you cannot groove, or why if you pick up uh, brushes you have to play jazz. Yeah. Okay, uh, in jazz they are very common. They, I yeah. think they were invented to play jazz. Here's my sticky chewing gum, I, I put it away. Uh, these uh, gums are used to uh, the damp, uh, dampen the overtones. Mm -hmm. So uh, the drums sound a little bit drier. So now I have some brushes. I'm gonna play you a groove that is not jazz, but it's still yeah. a groove. Yeah. Yes, you can play uh, uh, groovy. Uh, killer grooves. Killer grooves. Yeah. With this, let's see. One, two. Mm. Good example. Thanks. And I think it's also a favorite of the people here in the studio because it's not too loud. <laughs> and the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, and the neighbors, of course, in this case. Cool. Thanks. We uh, have to conclude this part ah, okay. of the killer groove. And what we learned is uh, that you have to play basic parts on bass or guitar or keys. Basic, that's what we can do. Yes. So just make a loop and try to create your groove on top of that. Yeah. That is helpful. Uh, and yeah. So that's uh, so some people even uh, are good in programming. They have a keyboard and they use uh, yeah. w whatever kind of program on the computer. Even that would be fine. Yeah, you can even buy these loops from internet yeah. or download them. Or but I, I prefer instruments because you know I, I like the uh, the old-fashioned way of learning an instrument yeah. and take sure. time and do it. It's and make sure that you don't have too much notes in there. Absolutely. Make it open. Make it breathe. Yeah. I think that's the last uh, point here. Then we go to the last part of this clinic. And I mean, the last, uh, well, yeah, part of this clinic, uh, par apart from the play along that we are going to do at the end, oh, okay. where we summarize everything in oh, one song. Yes. Uh, we are going to go to uh, other music cultures. Ah. Because you told me when we did this clinic, you said, yeah, dynamics brings you a lot of new possibilities. Um, Make your making your groove breathe makes you gives you a lot of new possibilities to yeah. make a killer groove. Yeah. But you said you have to also listen to other musical cultures, and I really like to cover that in this clinic. Ah, yes. The reason why I say this is uh, I sometimes have the feeling that uh, nowadays you ha you are influenced by a lot of um, music on the radio. I mean, it doesn't matter where you come, you hear pop music, which is great. I love pop music, you know. Uh, but if you want to make your Playing a little bit richer, you have to study uh, a little bit deeper and go different styles and directions. Uh, which doesn't mean that you have to change your taste or you have to change your band or something. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, something for you personally to uh, um, yeah, develop yourself a little bit more. It's, it's, it's almost like, um, uh, okay, uh, you go through life and, and, and you have this attitude of, I know how life works. I don't need to learn more. That's it. Yeah. Give me another beer. You know, I, I cannot imagine you don't want to develop a little bit more. So, um, wh wh while I say this, uh, I totally realize that uh, sometimes I, I uh, get some students and they are so focused on, um, uh, they want to pick up speed, they watch the YouTube videos, uh, there's uh, gospel chops yeah, all yeah. around the church. Yeah. And uh, even stuff that I see, I go like, <laughs> what are they doing? I don't <laughs> understand what they're doing. It's, it's really fast and it's impressive. Yeah. It's just one little part of the game. I think the other part of the game, more important part, is to explore and, and try And by the way, if you want to play in a band, it's not very useful to... No, no. That's what it is for in drummers. Cases, you know, yeah. the drummers yeah. watch uh, drum videos. Yeah. yeah. I think drummers should watch music videos more. Yeah. So, so... Let me come back to that little story. So uh, I have a, a certain pattern that I uh, teach people that I learned when I was little. And the reason why I teach them is I found out in my career that on various moments, I could uh, rely on, on everything I was learning back then. 
and make it become a part of me. So I could translate that into a certain field, into rock or blues or whatever kind of music you're yeah. playing. So shall I give you an example? Yeah, sure. It's nice. Is, is, is it a, a typical uh, African sounding groove? It's a 12 8 bar. Um, with the best way you can count it, keep it simple, you go like pakiti pokiti pakiti pokiti one, two, three, four, and you feel everything in a in a triplet feel. Uh, let me play this. Let me just play the full uh, groove and then I analyze it a little bit for everybody and uh, and they can do something with it. So one, not too fast. So this is a good example of a 12-8 mm -hmm. bar groove that uh, if, you, if you train this and if you learn this uh, thing and um, you know, I, I've written down some, some of the things, yep. we, we can send them to people, right, yep. and you can download sure. it later, but it, it really inspired me because if you listen to the groove, it goes to and you have this here. <laughs> I have this little rotor tom here. Yeah. You can do this like a talking drum. But if I play with the hands, again here you can hear the groove has like a low note and a, a high pitched note. Yeah. The low note is just the open tone. And it, it's a, a principle of uh, playing congas. Yeah? Yeah. And all the ghost notes you hear, pakiti, pakiti, yeah. is all the other uh, stuff you're doing there. So you can easily start translating this uh, to a little rototom. And there you have a, a total different uh, uh, yeah. sound in your head. I think that if you play something, your memory, your brain will remember this. So if I remember this, Just keep playing this. I could play a different groove on the drums with this in my drum head. Yeah. In my drum head. Yeah, 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 <laughs> in my yeah, drum yeah, head. Yeah, It's more like playing percussion on your drums. It's more like playing percussion on your drums. Yeah. Uh, and once you start doing that, the, the you know the benefit you will gain is you will hear different information in your yeah. head, and that in your head will make you play in a more musical way. Yeah, yeah. And I remember from last time that you were always humming, yes, in your head, yes, this musical ID, and yes. then try to play it on the drums. And I yeah. think the trick is to translate what you have in your head yeah. to the drum kit. Yeah. By, by it's, using not, it's, it's not easy, but, no, but no, no. I think that... Uh, it's something you can practice. Exactly. The African roof I show you is, is yeah. one of the goals to get there. Yeah. You know, you learn this and then you, you open the different doors. Like, wow, what is that? Yeah. And then you can get inspired. The and trick do is to translate everything you hear in your head to your hands. Yeah. There's a question coming in. Yes. Um, someone who's asking um, if you ever work with electronics like triggers mm. in your setup. I did. 
but only because the artist that I was working with uh, asked for it. Yeah. Um, and does it does it make playing dynamically harder with triggers? Because uh, no, you depend on technology more. No, then. because the, the the fun part is that um, you know with the, the uh, you know technology of today, uh, you can influence the yeah. sensibility and sensitivity of the of uh, anything you hit. So in fact, you can uh, uh, if you work out. I mean, let, let's be honest. It's a lot of work. Electronics. Yeah. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And imagine more electronics. Yeah. I did that before. Uh, I had a great, uh, what was it, pads? Yeah. Six or nine pads. Yeah. I forgot what it was. I just gave it away to a friend of mine. Because you know what? I, I discovered, hey, I'm practicing bass. I'm, I'm recording with guitars. Uh, I'm a producer. I yeah. play drums. At some point, you go like, you know, for myself, I wouldn't do it. But yeah. if an artist would ask me to do this, I can do it. Yeah. Sure. But it takes you a lot of time to learn how to work with these electronics. If, if you if you want to get into it, ask yeah. ask any drummer. Yeah, you need time to you need time to spend to, to learn. It, yeah. 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 Well, we will see. It. I guess we will see more of that in Michael Check's absolutely clinic. Michael is the master. Yeah, he's, he's the, the master, master of electronics yes. <laughs> <laughs> and hybrid drumming. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's con let's continue with these musical influences. Yes, um, the musical influences. Yeah, um, what what happens also? I think that's uh, uh, that's very important. I know that a lot of drummers will say, yeah, but, and that but is like, yeah, but then I have to change my drumming, then I have to change the drum set. You know what? It's great to do that. Yeah. Uh, I think anything to get you out of the uh, your comfort zone, like uh, uh, I, I remember that, uh, you know, I played for a long time, I played with uh, a blues guitar player, Snowy White, and of course, you uh, in, the, in the beginning, you had to play blues shuffles. And then, of course, uh, I tried every now and then to uh, hit something else. And uh, lucky for me, the guitar player Snowy was a, a great man as he is. He was open to that. Mm. So uh, we had a great time. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I, am, I created a groove. I remember this. Let me, let me show okay, you yeah, this. Okay, can you show it? Yeah, yeah I can show you. It's, uh, it's of a song that, in fact, I was trying to find a different uh, groove. And I remember the producer of that uh, studio, English guy, he, he told me, actually, change your drum set. I don't want to hear a blues shuffle. Find something else. Okay. So then in the end, uh, we changed the groove into something that was totally no shuffle, but it sounded like this. Let me, let me try and find it. Uh, I have to find the tones here. This is a different setup. Ah, something like that. Uh, no faith required was the song. Oh, my old brains. One, two, three. Trying to find a groove here. Uh, it's, it's interesting to see. Even I have to search now. What did I do? So because the setup is different, I remember this little tom was a bongo. It was yeah. there. And uh, when I played, it was a different uh, uh, different setup. So now I have to reprogram my brains. So it goes like this. That was the, that was yeah. the order. So you can hear that the bass room is not on the one, it's somewhere else, but it's not so important where it is, it's yeah. part of all the drums. So if you go one, two, three, ah. crazy to play it right now yeah and I'm glad I uh, I just uh, did it because now you can also see that even I who invented this groove I have to research yeah, how sure. I play it it's a physical game but once you have it it's it's, it's there again so then you feel more secure you and then recall it, it you can recall it but it's totally different from let's say a regular shuffle that you absolutely normally play it's even another shuffle and how anymore. did the people respond on that um, it's really funny. Uh, we, d we did this song on live uh, many times, and then uh, we were invited at uh, 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 programs on uh, was on a filter, a German yeah, program, German live program, music. Yeah. And uh, because uh, we played there two times, it was 10 years in between. So we got this DVD box, which was great. And uh, I never watched those concerts back because, you know, you do a lot of things. Yeah. And then once uh, I had a nice little red wine, I watched the show, and this 
this tune came up and I was like, F word, G. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. I, I liked it. I liked it. And um, after that, uh, I got some response from, you know, your yeah, Facebook. Yeah. And people watched it also and they said, that, that particular group, can, yeah, you, can you teach me yeah. that? I think one of the things we also discussed before we did this clinic and uh, why you said, I want to have these other kind of music styles yes. involved here yeah. is that you are doing a lot of this stuff la lately. Yes. Because yeah. we see a lot of videos from you on the yeah. internet because yeah. you like to produce these videos, yes. of course. <laughs> and uh, and you're also in a band of which we are going to hear more later on with mm -hmm. the Play Along. Mm -hmm. But maybe you can give some examples what's happening there, how you how you use other styles. Okay. Um, well, first of all, um, uh, now, it's, uh, of course, I mean, for me, it's difficult to say, oh, that I picked that from that style. Mm. I can only play. And then I realize afterwards, li like this, after what's happened, what yeah. happened, and then I can uh, can make a little analysis, yeah. and then I can explain okay. it. Okay. So just, just, just let's, let's, some let's do something else. Um, uh, well, with my experimental band, uh, they are called Leper. Uh, yeah. We try to uh, uh, to go out of our comfort zone, and w what happens first is you start jamming. Of course, you start jamming, and the second thing what happens is you, you try to control the jam a little bit more. So you have to record and record and listen back to the stuff. So. Uh, in many ways, for me, it's easy to start with this to 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 uh, to prevent I'm going into a, a very strong rock-based yeah. uh, groove. So let me give you a, a couple of examples. So uh, the keyboard player starts making a sound, boom, something I don't expect, and then I do this. The groove going on the right yeah. symbol. I like uh, the, the approach of the right symbol. It's not jazz, yeah? It's not swing. Let me say no, it's no, 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 no. It's not no. swing. But you create a certain pattern and then you wait with uh, uh, using the bass from the snare. Yeah. Why would you use the bass from, from the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in your case, you ha you're lucky because you have people in the band that understand the way you're going. Yes. Uh, but of course, that's the luck you have. Not everyone in the band likes to have these new influences. I don't think it's luck. It's more like, hey, uh, you create a band like this, experimental yeah, band, yeah, yeah. And you can say then to each other, hey, then we don't play pop music. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, a matter of uh, creating time to do this. Yeah. You know, uh, we don't earn money with it, but yeah. we put out singles and we put out stuff, but yeah. I don't know if people buy it, but for us, it's, it, it, we don't care. You know, we make this and we create Great. this and we love We're it. We're going to listen to uh, yes. Play Along later yes. on. Because we have to conclude this part of the clinic. Uh, what can we do with other music cultures? Yes. Uh, first of all, it's about exploring what happens, for instance, in percussion. Because there yep. you hear a lot of influences from yep. outside. Try to approach your kid as playing a perc percussion. Maybe yep. do some percussion lessons to understand what these guys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then translate these tones uh, over your kit, like we discussed in the last clinic. Yep. Use your the full kit and not only just snare and hi-hat and bass, but, yep. but just use everything. And hopefully you have a lot of dynamics in your, your, your kit also available. Yep. Maybe you should invest some more in uh, effect drums or something like that. Yeah, or start start uh, tuning your drums to uh, you know so yeah. it sounds very dynamical. And think out of the box. Absolutely. Also together with your band, yeah. think out of the box because then you get you you will be more specific in your drums. Yeah. People will will, will recognize you from the style you're yeah. playing. So if, again, thanks. Some good tips. In this well, clinic. You're welcome. But we again, as I said, we're going to go to the to the play along later on. But we have to uh, be before that. Uh, I think we don't have any questions here anymore. Uh, so I thank you all for watching and attending this clinic. And if you want to see it tomorrow or the day after, just go back to our website, musicclinics.com, or visit our Facebook page. I guess you will see it over there tomorrow or the day after. So you can re uh, review this clinic again. Um, there is some related information in the download section. You can see your setup. Uh, your mic setup also, also interesting uh, to see, and your new cymbal setup from Meinl.
for people to inspire because there are a lot of effect symbols in there also and these symbols sound totally different from what we know you from before mm. and the last but not uh, the least is the evaluation on musicclinics.com you can click on the evaluation button and hopefully you will send us your feedback on this clinic because we like to know what you think of it and what you think about what we can improve and what topics you want to see in one of our future clinics. And by the way, we have clinics scheduled as you can see on the website with Michael Check and with Mario Gosens and I can tell you there are more coming up for uh, the last part of this year. Um, so hopefully you fill in this evaluation. If you are on Facebook, there will not be an evaluation page, but you just send us a comment and we will read it and of course, and we take everything into consideration. If you have questions for Juan, even send it to him. I know he's on Facebook the whole day, if he's not playing drums <laughs> or bass or whatever, or percussion, but he will answer them, I guess. I Don't will. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nico. Uh, so again, thank you for watching. And uh, Juan, the floor is yours again. For cool. the band Leper, yes. specific setup, drums, keys, saxophone. saxophone, that's it. That's it. We Think out of the box, play yes. out of the box. Yes. Go ahead. But uh, being able to make songs that people can whistle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, yep.